Hey YouTube, welcome to part 5 of the front end loader build. In this episode we're going to be building the quick attach for the bucket. I've made the quick attach rather curvy because I think that looks professional, but you could get the same result by putting the holes in the correct place and just drawing straight lines between them to have a basic triangular shape, which would look kind of ugly. I prefer the way I've done it, let's have a look and see how it went. I've got these house sides, all four of them on the drill press here, and I'm lined up to drill the first of the 38mm holes through all four. So, without further ado, let's get on with the job. There's a plug out of the first layer, and since it had the mark on it, you can see there, again, mark's dead centre in it. I've got to turn the camera on while I drill the fourth layer, but rest assured it was no different to the first three layers. And that hole's done. I'll do the other 38mm hole off camera, but I will come back on camera for the 32mm hole, which is only partly on the job piece. That should be fairly interesting just to prove whether or not we can drill that hole. Alright, here we go, we're cutting the 32mm hole now, and as you can see the cutter's off the edge of the material. Haven't done this before. I think an annual cutter should do it, and we're about to find out. Very first layer. Didn't miss a beat, so I don't think it actually cares whether it's fully on or, or not. And there's the plug, and that's the edge of the material, that flat section. And it's a bit hard to tell things were on the edge of the material, but I reckon that mark is in the centre of it anyway. So yes, I think this is going to be successful. Wow, I timed that one just right. Didn't even get him stuck. Okay, that went through all layers really, really nicely. Got to be happy with that. Logically, it seems likely that being part way off this wouldn't matter given the type of cutter it is. But I'm glad to be treated right. Now I've drilled one more hole in this off camera and that's this hole. And that's just in the centre of the large cut out here. Now I don't have anything that'll pop that large cut out at 60 mils. I'm going to use that to draw a circle around it and I'll cut it out freehand with a plasma cutter and see how that goes. I'm just marking out one of these quick attach now. Some of this can be a little bit rough, it's going to be freehand plasma. And this radius is going to be about 40 millimetres. About there will do. Got this plug section here just to give me a centre for marking this sort of stuff. And this one's going to go right to the edge here. And it's already really small radiuses I can draw. I have a big radius in through there. Now it's marked on the plans as being 180 millimetre radius. My radius is going to end up being about 160 rather than 180. But that's fine because this radius here is purely for cosmetic purposes. There's no other purpose. Just I thought it looked good. Now we've got another 180 coming in uh, down to a 40 here. So we've got 6 back and 40 up. Okay, so, about there. And we're roughly there. This is a pop punch marking, so I've got a, a centre for the uh, pump to sit in. Forty radius there, and again I'll use this. Not critical, but just giving it an interesting shape. If you wanted to, you could make it a straight line. This wouldn't look as interesting. Somewhere in here, we want a bit of a freehand radius, like that. And I haven't got a mark up here where I need that to come to. I'll do the cutouts down here. Seek and you shall find. Got an old container of something here, and here's exactly 120. So. If I eyeball the centre of that container out from there, and there's the radius I need to cut there. 
Now from this row you could want to go just a bit shy of that, so about 10 mil shy. Half inch shy make it, 12 and a half, 12.7 mils. And that's that line. And same here, about half inch above that. There. And we draw that in there. And that's what we've got to plasma out. Also I've got to cut the 60 mil hole out. And that's our plasma cutting. I'll mark the second one off camera. I'm just going to be plasmering up the two sides or the quick attach of the bucket. A lot of it's going to be freehand, but there's a couple of straight lines that I agree. Probably four straight lines, five straight lines that I can use a guide with. So where I can, I will. Just a bit wonky when I go freehand. Okay, the rest of it's freehand, and that is getting warm now. Oh, okay, the light came off. Quite sure that I wanted that yet, but never mind. Oh, it's going to fall off in a minute, too. Because these curves are entirely cosmetic, there's a fair bit of latitude in cutting them out. So long as you leave enough meat behind to provide strength, and you make the curves reasonably even, then they'll be just fine. Hey, you nearly forgot I got this big circle to cut out of here. My pipe's got to go down through him, so it looks like if I take the line away, we should have enough there to build a weld on. Uh, probably should have drilled a hole through to start this, but we'll see if we can gouge our way through it. Okay, a little bit of work for the die grinder. Would have fixed that now. Really do wish I'd drilled a pilot hole on this now, but never mind, we'll gouge through again. Right, got them all cut, now i just got to grind them off so they're nice and smooth and even. Now to grind these off, I've done what I normally do, and I've lined them up precisely using the drilled holes in them, and clamped all four of them together so that I can grind them all together and come up with a uniform result. And because I cut these holes out here with a plasma, where the pipe's going through, I have to smooth them off a little bit. In the old days, you'd do that with a file. These days, if you had a plasma table, it would come out reasonably smooth for you, and you may not even have to do anything if you had a proper CNC plasma table. But since I cut it by hand, a little bit shaky, I guess, and not very used to it, so I've got to grind it nice and smooth so that the pipe will actually fit through. And this is the tool I've got for it, a little burr grinder. This is a half inch bit on the burr grinder. I've got a quarter inch as well. I bought a quarter inch and a half inch from China, the cheapest chips. I wished I'd bought a bigger one now, I probably will, when I think about it when I'm on eBay one day. I'll order something a bit bigger because they are a brilliant tool. I like using them on the air tool. That's three two layers. And that's three two layers. So that'll do, get the pipe in on both sets. The quick attach design is fairly simple, apart from the sides all we need is a couple of ears, a couple of rods and a couple of small pieces of pipe to act as torque tubes. Right, got all the pieces prepared for the quick attach for the bucket, or forks or whatever else we're going to put on there. We have two of the rods, two of the tubes, two of the ears. I cut them out, it would have been nicer if I had bought a piece of metal that was the right size for it, but had this on hand. Looks pretty neat, I ground it down well. By the time I get a coat of paint on from a distance, it'll look fine. And, of course, we have four sides, all shaped up, ready to go. And I have this piece of 75mm to use as a spacer block. Hopefully that's all I'm going to need. If I need any more, I'm going to have to go and cut something to use, just for spacing it out while I weld it. I made these in pairs, I'll put them aside and work on this one first. The idea is to have our spacer block there like that. I'm not wanting to do it up real tight. That'll go in there, it'll go across here, but not all the clamps there. Oh, actually, I can probably turn the clamp up here and put the ear in there like that. 
Given the precarious nature of what I've got to put together here, I think the best idea would be to get some tacks on a few pieces and try and put it together a little bit piecemeal. Got to be careful, the first one doesn't matter, but the second one, these are handed. The ears go off on the opposite sides. So, as I say, when you do the second one, make sure that you do the ear on the opposite side. Uh, I guess I'll get the welding gear ready and start tacking. All right, get the machine to square and see if we can get him all lined up nice and square. I ended up cutting the tack on the rod and taking that off to weld it on last. And given the way it turned out, I think that was the right decision. It may have distorted a bit more had I left it on and tried to weld it first. And this is another tricky assembly where the best way to do it is lots of small tacks to make sure that it doesn't warp out of shape. Uh, have it clamped up fairly tightly and put space blocks in wherever you can. Flux just fell off that one. I do want to fill up that where I cut it a little bit high. I need to do a little bit of well build up on that. Big gap to fill. Now this is purely for aesthetics this. Welding the ear on did pull a bit, only about a millimetre and a half the top for a sixteenth of an inch. But I did want to get a perfectly square with pivot pin, so I need to fix that. Alright, I'll go off camera. I shall need a little bit more persuasion on this to straighten it. It'll probably bend down through there on the side plate, but that'll be fine. It's more important to have this square than to have the side plate exactly right. And to make that square, we'd be talking less than a millimetre of bend in the side plate. So again, won't even notice it. Well, I did figure out a few things while I was off camera. I straightened out the one that pulled a little bit out of square, so this is nice and straight now. But then, when I did the other one, I knew how much this pulled out of square, so I set that other one exactly the same amount out of square in the opposite direction, so that when it pulled in, it was pretty right. So that may be the secret to it, I think. I sort of have heard people say that on uh, various YouTube videos about how to weld. But knowing how much to offset it is a different thing. I guess that comes with experience. Once I've done one, I got the other one exactly perfect. Uh, but without having done that first one, that wouldn't have happened. So, yeah, something I guess you just learn as you go along. The more experience you get, the better you get at it. Anyway, we're set up now to put this tube in. Now it's just a bit of a torque tube to help hold some of the load. I don't think it matters where the seam in the pipe goes. I'm putting mine at the bottom because of the nature of the load on it. I don't think it'll matter. But anyway, I'm just going to put one tack on it and then take it apart, square it all up and hopefully get it nice and square when I weld it. Now, I don't know, I think I've mentioned it before, but if you've got a good machinist square and you're using it around your welding table, Always make sure you get it well out of reach of spatter. Because a little bit of spatter on it will just ruin a good square. Right, well that's got him nice. The trick is to get him all tacked up without any more pulling. That blue paint they use on it is obviously flammable. And stinks. Right, didn't pull. That's a lot more solid tack that one. I put three tacks around in between those others, but from this other side now. Yeah, gee, I hope that hadn't pulled. I'll have to cut them if it has. No. No, it's good. It's good from all angles. I think those tacks, I hope those tacks will hold it from pulling anymore. Hope if I can just go around, put a weld right around that. See how we went. Pull that line, maybe quarter of a millimetre. There's enough tolerance in the hole to take that. Go ahead and weld this side up and we're good. 
and I'll knock the slag off that. I think it looks like pretty reasonable weld and might need a little touch up there. I removed a tad fast, but other than that, doesn't look too bad. And so far, nice and square. Well, that's really nice there where I had, a, had it nice and smooth when I started to wobble this around to go all the way around. Went a little bit funny, not too bad. That bit there is the only bit where I went in the reverse direction where I want to do something with it. I'm not happy. Oh, that's a much better, much better way to roll it. I've got much more control over the weld bead there. I won't weld that on. I'll let that cool for a bit. And I'll weld the other side up. Getting him set up is a bit of an exercise. And you've just heard me say that you never weld around your good machinist square. Well, it's the most solid square I've got for doing this. So there's an exception to every rule. We're going to put a tack right over top of the machinist square, but I'm going to put that bit of scrap metal on it to protect it from any spatter. Now, put a decent tack on it for two reasons. One, the pipe didn't distort at all on the last job. So I've got a little bit of confidence that it's not going to distort again. And two, we need to hold him pretty well. Let's check everything again. Make sure nothing's moved. Oh, by Dave. I don't know, welding pipe doesn't seem to pull. Don't understand it. Well, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. It has been one of the longest ones I've done, and that's because I did try to cover everything in detail so that anyone who wanted to repeat this exercise could be able to do it in the same sequence and come up with something that's not all walked out of shape. In the next episode, I hope to build the arms of the front end loader and get finished. If you'd like to see more of my projects, you can go to my channel or browse to my website. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe. Until next time.